Hi there, I'm Dr. Trevor Cates. Welcome to the Spa Doctor Podcast. Since I've continued to receive so many questions about skin health, skin care, aging, and beauty tips, like I did last week, I'm designating another entire podcast today answering your questions. I will get through as many questions today as I can, just like I did last time, and and then I'll answer any additional ones in upcoming podcasts. At the end of this podcast, if you haven't had your questions answered, I'll explain how you can get additional questions answered. In this podcast, I answer questions such as how your diet may be causing pimple outbreaks, chemicals and wrinkle creams, crepey looking skin, bioidentical hormones, vitiligo, under the eye dark circles and puffy bags, and best oils for skin. And there are more questions that I answer too, so there's so much to cover. Here are your answers. Here's the next question. This is from Martha. Hi, Dr. Cates. I love listening to your podcast and learn a lot from the interviews. Thank you, Martha. A couple of months ago, I noticed a rash on one of my eyelids and most recently noticed that the skin in the area was lighter. My dermatologist thinks it's vitiligo and ordered some blood tests that I'll get done next month during my checkup. The dermatologist also recommended that I could have an autoimmune disease. I I have had a lot of stress and also have done some wax in the affected areas. Is there any information that you can give me about vitiligo? Any recommendations on what I should do? I'm 58 years old and generally have always been healthy. Thank you so much for your time and what you're doing. Okay, Martha, vitiligo is um, is a skin, it is an autoimmune disease that impacts the skin. And what we see is we've seen, we see these hypopigmentation areas, these light in contrast to, to the regular skin. So and those patches of areas can be on the face, it can really be anywhere on the body. And in the beginning, it can be in small amounts, but then it can start to spread in some people it's very visible and very noticeable in other people it's just it's very mild um and it it does again have to do with the immune system and so anything that you can do to to balance your immune system and keep it working in a way that is working well but not overreactive because an autoimmune disease happens when your immune system is attacking itself. And so we want to calm down the immune system in a way instead of just boosting the immune system, we want to calm it and balance it. Um, One of the ways to do that is to look to see if you have any food allergies and make sure you're not eating foods that you might be reactive to because if you're eating a food that you're allergic or sensitive to it flares up the immune system and can aggravate autoimmune disease so it's important to start identifying any foods that might be trigger foods for you and avoid those Um, a lot of times when people have autoimmune disease or have a lot of allergies it has to do with with gut issues and there might be some issues going on there. You might need some digestive support, support with your gut microbiome. The balance of microorganisms that are in your digestive tract might need some support. Um, in addition, you can take antioxidants. Some of my favorites, um, for example, are um, alpha lipoic acid is particularly good. Um, also, B vitamins, particularly B12 and folate are important for, for vitiligo. And there is a recent a meta-analysis recent study that that looked at vitamin D levels. So this is blood levels of vitamin D and low vitamin D was associated with vitiligo and this meta-analysis from March of this year. So I would have your vitamin D levels tested. So you ask for 25 hydroxy vitamin D and you want to make sure that your levels is within the normal range, but not only within the range, but more mid-range and not on the low end of the range. So if, and if they are low, then I would definitely consider supplementing with a vitamin D3 supplement. So I hope that gives you some ideas for vitiligo. Okay, next question is from Angelina from Australia. Hi, Dr. Cates. I just wanted to ask if you are considering making skincare products for the body to complement the products you've made for the face. Thank you. And letting you know, I have received my Spot Doctor's Daily Essential Skincare range on May 12th. So I'm looking forward to using them and experiencing positive results. I'm excited to hear back from you, Angelina, and your experience. So yes, we are looking at this option. Thanks for asking. 
I, I can say it's it's so it'll be a little while before I have body products so um, but we are working on some ideas for that and it's good to know that that's an interest of yours we always like to know what are the products people really want what is it that you want next we have our four-step daily essential system and we're looking into developing other products skincare products as well so really want to hear from you and know what is it that you need the most what are the products that you want so if you want to give us that feedback like like um, Angelina has done here, feel free to post those comments, contact me on social media, let us know what what you want to see, what you want developed. But in the meantime, um, a- Angelina, I would say what you could do is you've got the cleanser, the skin, um, the face cleanser, you can actually use that on your body. You probably want to, you'd want to order more of the products, but it doesn't, it doesn't foam like a typical body wash, but that's because it's great that got that great mild acidity, but you can use it all over the body. We've been thinking about bundling up the cleanser into a pack so people can use it for their body. Um, and then as far as body moisturizers for now, until we have something, some of my favorites are coconut oil, almond oil, jojoba oil. Jojoba oil is spelled J-O-J-O-B-A. And these can be great natural moisturizers for the skin. Okay, next question is from Bob. I'm 64 and still get pimples. I'm permanently on a low carb, high fat diet. Any suggestions? Well, I do think that reducing carbohydrate load such as reducing refined grains, Um, it does help, it helps balance blood sugar, so that can help with reducing acne breakouts. But not all, I just wanna point out that not all carbs are bad. I don't want to sound like you should never eat carbs because vegetables and fruit are also carbohydrates. And I think some grains can be beneficial because these have vegetables and fruit have lots of antioxidants that protect from oxidative damage. And when it comes to acne, one of the reasons we have these breakouts is because of the oxidative damage occurring in the skin. So we do, antioxidants can be very beneficial. So eating these colorful fruits and vegetables, which are carbohydrates, are a great part of a diet. And I'm guessing you probably already do this, but you're thinking more along the lines of grains. Um, so limiting grains can be beneficial for many people. Um, you know, do going more of a gluten-free whole grain with some options like quinoa or brown rice in moderation. I think they're good. And also they can add fiber like fruits and vegetables. They also have fiber in them. We need fiber for healthy digestion, within, which then helps with healthy skin. As far as high fat goes, I want to mention that. You did mention a high fat diet. Um, It's really about balance. And I I imagine you're not overdoing it on fat and you're eating the right kinds of fats. But I just want to make sure. So you want to be careful to avoid those trans fats, those hydrogenated oils, and instead having enjoying things like coconut oil for cooking and olive oil and avocado oils for salad dressings. It's really about balance, and and so we know that we want to get a balance of carbohydrates, fats, protein in our diet, in every meal, making sure we get plenty of vegetables. Um, of course, I do want to mention too that dairy fat, if you're eating a lot of dairy fat, that can be a trigger for acne. I do find that the number the number one food for, for acne breakouts for the being a trigger is sugar or anything that turns to sugar. So certainly watching your carb count can be beneficial. However, also the second big food is our dairy products. And so dairy is one of those trigger foods for skin and can cause acne breakouts and unfortunately another one that I see not as often but for some people are eggs and I know that for people who are eating more of a high you know that you know a low carb diet sometimes they're eating a lot of eggs so you want something to watch out for simply you could take out eggs for 10 days reintroduce them see if your skin reacts to them so those are some dietary things you could be doing of course, I'm always trying to look, what is the underlying cause? Are there gut issues going on for you? Are there nutritional issues, deficiencies? Are there hormonal imbalances that you might want to address? All of these things play a role. And what you're putting on your skin. How are you cleaning your skin? Are you overstripping it? You're getting the right kinds of cleansing, the right kind of nourishment for your skin. So all things to think about. And that mild acidity is also key. 
So here's another question. Tell me more about uh, powerful chemicals and wrinkle creams. This is from Tahira. So some of the top ingredients to look for in skincare products, especially wrinkle creams, because they oftentimes will have these, are fragrance. Unfortunately, fragrance is in a lot of products and it's an opportunity for companies to hide a lot of harmful ingredients. A lot of hormone disrupting chemicals are hidden here, such as phthalates. Phthalates are a plasticizing agent and they're in fragrance. Diethyl phthalate is in fragrance to help it last longer, to help the smells last longer, to preserve that smell. So unfortunately, fragrance, synthetic fragrance is not something that you want in your personal care products. Also parabens, you'll see methyl, propyl, butyl paraben, these types of parabens in your skincare products. They are used as preservatives, but they're also, they have estrogenic qualities and they've been found in breast tumor tissue. So definitely something to avoid. And the last one that I want to mention, because there's so many, but I just want to mention a few to look for. The last one is formaldehyde releasers. When we put these ingredients on our skin, it releases formaldehyde into the air around us and we breathe that in. And formaldehyde is a known carcinogen. So we want to be careful with this. You will not see formaldehyde listed on the ingredient label though. Here are some of the things to look for. Again, excuse my pronunciation of some of these things. Quaternarium 15, diazodenyl urea, DMDM hydantoin or imidazodal <laughs> urea. Oh, those are big mouthful words. So I'm sure those are not, uh, based upon my pronunciation, you will probably have no idea how to spell those. You can do a search for formaldehyde releasers. You can also check out my blog, thespotdoctor.com forward slash, uh, forward slash, forward slash blog. And then there's a blog called, Are You Covering Your Face With Toxins? And I have that, all of those listed on there. I will also be covering this a lot more in depth in my book. All right, next question. This is from Donna. I deal with vitiligo, which is autoimmune disease, which we've already talked about a little bit. So hopefully, Donna, you've got some ideas on things to look for. But my main concern is that recently my skin on my arms and legs has started to become crepey looking. I would love to know if there are things I can do or stop doing that would improve this condition. Okay, so Donna, one of the biggest things that causes that creepy skin is our collagen loss. When we lose collagen in our skin, it starts to sag and get really thin and crepey. So the things that you can do to help support collagen is if you're... Um, if you eat animal protein, collagen, you can get straight collagen protein. Um, I, For example, I make a supplement called Collagen Complete, and it has collagen along with some other nutrients in there that help the absorption of it. Um, and so collagen, you can take straight collagen. It does come from an animal source. We're sure to use clean sources. But um, when, you, um, when you take that, your body um, can hopefully be using some of that. And it's also great for your digestive tract, great for your joints, your hair, your nails. So it's great for the skin as too. Now, um, if you want some additional sport support or you don't eat animal protein, maybe you're vegetarian, vitamin C we need to help support our collagen. Oftentimes I'll actually tell people to take, um, so I have a vitamin C powder and a collagen complete powder. Oftentimes I'll tell people to take those two together because they help support each other so much. You could also take vitamin C on its own to help support collagen. Uh, so that hopefully I'll give you some ideas. Also, um, you may have heard me talk about bone broth and that being um, a good source of collagen in food. So again, if you're a meat eater, you can make some bone broth and that can help support your collagen. Okay, next question is from... Audrey. Hi. Hi, Dr. Cates. I am 64 years old and taking bioidentical hormones. I feel great, but sometimes break, break out from oily skin and little bumps. This is probably from my testosterone. Any suggestions on how to handle that? Thanks. So Audrey, you may, um, I think bioidentical hormones can be fantastic for people. They can, like you said, make you feel great, especially during perimenopause or after, after menopause, um, making us feel more like ourselves when our hormones really start to drop off. However, you can't get too much. You don't want to go overboard with the hormones. So I would talk with your doctor. Maybe you're getting too much testosterone um, 
or maybe your body is not metabolizing the testosterone very well. So you can actually have your DHT, your dihydrate to testosterone, your DHT tested to see if maybe you're not metabolizing it very well, especially if you're also noticing some hair loss. If you're noticing hair loss or you're noticing any facial hair growth along with it, then maybe you're getting too much testosterone and you're not metabolizing it right. Also, if you're doing bioidentical hormones and you're doing DHEA, I've also known that hormone to help to, I mean, it actually will, will trigger oily skin and sometimes skin breakouts in, um, and especially in women. So if you just go ahead and talk to your doctor about that, if you are on DHEA, you might want to consider switching to something called seven keto DHEA, which doesn't seem to have the same kind of effect. Okay. Next question is from Danielle. Hi, Dr. Kate. Thank you for all your helpful and educational information that you share with your audience through your social media outlets. I am a monthly subscriber to your daily essentials four-step system for the face and neck and has become my AM and PM routine, and I appreciate your products are natural and toxin-free. I am 54, and I am now enjoying a soother, softer, clearer, and glowing complexion. That's great, Danielle. Thanks for sharing that. My question is, will you be introducing a body cleanser, moisturizer, and or shampoo and conditioner? Okay, great. So that's another question in this topic. Um, uh, she said, I'd love to be pH balanced from head to toe. I love that, Danielle. Uh, we are considering these and other products, and you're so right. pH balance is so important for our skin. And it's not just for our face, it's for our entire body to help keep our skin clear and aging gracefully. So, Danielle, stay tuned. We'll let you know when we're creating more of these products. Okay, so hello. I am, this is from Anthepi. Hello, I'm looking for green, clean, effective skincare for eyes, neck, body, and face. I have esthetician training and always use effective but expensive products. As a health coach and 63-year-old young, 63 year olds young, I am interested in effective green and clean skincare. Well, you've come to the right place. So I've, you know, I've created my own skincare line, the Spot Doctors Daily Essentials. It's a four-step system. So definitely contact us, come to the website, thespotdoctor.com, or you can just go directly to our store, store.thespotdoctor.com. Try out the products and let us know what you think. I'm always excited to hear back from people with experience and estheticians, dermatologists. We have a lot of people, a lot of professionals using our products because they work so well and they're clean and non-toxic. Okay, moving on to a question from Veronica. Dr. Cates, you have interviewed a number of experts and they have some similarities in what they were recommending eating, but also have some minor differences. I was wondering if you recommend peanuts or eggs. If you think that they are foods you recommend, can you say why? Also, since dairy is frequently one of one most of your guests have recommended we stay away from, what do you recommend for sources of calcium, especially for kids? Lastly, what what do you pack your what do you pack in your kids' lunches? Sandwiches with bread seem to be the mainstay. Is there a particular bread you think is okay? Okay, so we got some questions, a few questions here. Peanuts and eggs. I I think that for some people these foods are okay. But for many people, especially people with skin issues, these can be big trigger foods. So in my two-week program, these are two of the foods that I do take people off of in addition to dairy and some of the other foods that I find are big trigger foods. So peanuts and eggs, what you can do, eliminate them for 10 days. See how your body does, how you react to it. And if you feel better, that's going to be a pretty good sign. And if you, when you reintroduce those foods, introduce one at a time. If you reintroduce them and you notice you have more problems, then those are probably trigger foods. Or you can have some food intolerance or allergy testing to find out. As far as calcium in dairy products goes, that's a really great question. I get asked this a lot. So actually, even though dairy products have higher amounts of calcium than any other food, your body actually doesn't absorb it as much as certain other foods like those of green leafy vegetables and salmon. So those are foods that I would say, look at it, incorporating those. And even bone broth can have high amounts of calcium when it's made straight from bones. And um, as far as what to put in your kids' lunches, well, there are a lot of options. Um, you know, there are a lot of different 
things you can make with wraps. You can even make lettuce wraps. You can, um, you don't have to have sandwiches, but if you're going for a sandwich, there are lots of gluten-free bread options out there that might be okay for your kids. But I would really try and say, what can you do instead of bread? What are some of the things you can do that you can make instead? I've started making tortillas for my my daughter um, from from almond flour, and she really loves those. So just get creative and, and experiment. There's a lot of different options that you can include in your child's lunchbox. Okay, I have a few more questions here. Um, so uh, this is from Malka. Hi, since you asked, would you um, would using coconut oil on one's face be clogging even for drying skin? Is argan oil safe for skin? What's the lightest oil for the face? Wouldn't eating a mostly raw diet be counterproductive in the long run? Well, oh, so Malka, I'm going to go through each one of those. Coconut oil can be great on the face, can be great used. It's natural. It's um, clean. It can be used on the, the entire body. For some people, however, straight coconut oil can be a trigger for acne. So I would say be careful with coconut oil on the face if you tend to get acne. If you don't, it's probably all right. Now I should say in my cleanser, we have a little bit of coconut oil, but because we have it combined with other ingredients, it doesn't cause the breakouts. So it, if it is an ingredient in it, it may not be a trigger, but if you use it by itself, it can be a problem. Is argan oil safe for the skin? Argan oil is fantastic for the skin. Absolutely. Full of antioxidants, full of nutrients that are good for the skin. Skin loves it. Okay, what is the lightest oil for the face? I would say one of the lightest oils for the face would be jojoba oil, which I mentioned earlier. Jojoba oil is great for the face, very light, great for all different skin types. As far as doing a raw diet, I think raw diets and raw vegan diet can be great short term. I I don't personally think that it is beneficial long term. I think we do need some animal protein in our diet, even if it's a little bit of cheese or eggs or um or fish or something along those lines. And I know I just said cheese when a lot of them people are triggered by dairy. So for some, for a lot of people, that's not an option. And egg sometimes isn't an option for people. But fish is usually well tolerated by people. And um, if for philosophical reasons you want to be vegetarian or vegan, I completely respect that, understand there are ways to be vegetarian and still be healthy. However, I think eating some cooked food is good. Um, for example, um, there are raw raw vegetables that the cruciferous family have these goitrogenic substances in them that can actually aggravate thyroid conditions and make it worse. So we need to be careful um, sometimes with just eating a raw diet. Again, I think it can be great short term. I think it can be, be beneficial, but in the long term, I think it's good to eat a little bit of cooked food. Okay, this is the last question for today. This is from Judy. Hi, Dr. Case. I'm wondering how to eliminate both dark circles and puffy bags under my eyes. My understanding is that what you eat and how much nutrition is absorbed by your body as well as having a balanced gut microbiome speaks volumes in the nourishment of your skin. Absolutely, Judy. Hallelujah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I've, I have read that too much water consumption creates dark circles and inflammation causing puffiness or bags under the under the eyes but i don't know if this is true i don't know um judy that that drinking too much water would create that puffiness i think it's more of a, some of the things that i mentioned before having to do with dehydration sleep and allergies so those are the things that i would pay attention to the things that you already mentioned about your gut health and the gut microbiome your nutrition what are you absorbing and your hydration your sleep your stress all of that i think are really important what have you so she asked what have been the causes so i think i think i've mentioned i've answered that and certainly if you have further questions about that go ahead and post them in the comment section below that's all I have time to answer today. If you have a question that I did not answer or you want clarification on anything I talked about today, please post in the comment section below this video on YouTube or on thespadoctor.com and I'll do my best to answer those in upcoming podcasts. Also, I want to invite you to join the Spa Doctor community on my website so you don't miss any of our upcoming podcasts. And if you haven't done so already, you can get your own customized skin information about your 
your scan of the skin profile, theskinquiz.com. It's free based upon your answers to just a few questions. You'll get great tips for glowing skin and vibrant health. So go to theskinquiz.com. In just a few minutes, you'll have your own customized skin report. And another way to ask questions is on social media. You can join me on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter and join the conversation. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.